And uh, so what I want to do, man, I want to preach part two. I've got a word. I'm excited to preach. You say, well, Ryan, you get excited about preaching. I love to preach about my best friend. Uh, I want to preach part two in the series we're titled, All We Need Is Jesus. I know it's simple, and I know we have complicated everything. But I'm just stopped by today, 3145 East Hill Corn Road, to tell somebody who's listening I know you may be in a, a, a situation in your life that you say, Brian, you don't understand where I'm at. Jesus does. All you need, sir, is Jesus. Ma'am, all you need to get, you say, well, my, you don't know what my children, my grandchildren. All you need is Jesus. Yeah, all we need is Jesus. All we need is Jesus. Turn your neighbor and say, all you need is Jesus. Yeah, yeah. People ask me all the time to say, what in the world's going on in Elkhorn? And I'll just tell them, say, hey, listen, all, all, all we got is Jesus. And you say, Brian, that's it? Won't you try that? Won't you try that for a little bit? And so, man, listen, I, I'm, I'm excited uh, about this. And I want you to listen to me real quick before I preach. Don't take that name lightly. Do y'all hear me? Don't, don't take that name Jesus lightly. Because the Bible says that the name of Jesus, every knee, and every tongue, and God says that at the name of Jesus, every demon in hell has to flee. At the name of Jesus, you can lay hands upon the sick, and they shall recover. Don't take that name lightly. Don't say it loosely and lightly, because at that name, you can be saved, you can be born again, you can be healed, you can be delivered. I feel the Holy Ghost, and you can be set free in this house right now. Everybody say right now. Don't take that name lightly. Don't, don't, don't just say Jesus. You, you, there's purpose behind that name. Even the devil, watch this. Some of y'all, somebody's going to get saved today. I can look out there and already tell, feel the Holy Ghost. See, even the devil knows that the name of Jesus. He knows that name. We just say it loosely and lightly and act the way we want to act and do what we want to do. I'm just saying to tell y'all, there's going to be a latter rain. There's getting ready to be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit like none of us has ever seen before. Y'all, but you better hold on. I'm telling you, there's going to be an outpouring. There's going to be more saved. Listen, I'm going to prophesy this. There's going to be more saved than there was on the day of Pentecost. Y'all can look at me all y'all want to sideways if you want to. I'm just telling y'all, there's going to be a light of rain. There's going to be, a, don't take that name loosely and lightly. If you have your Bible, won't you turn to Luke chapter 9? Well, I feel the unction. The unction to function. Luke chapter 9, verses 1 through 5. This is a series. All we need is Jesus. <laughs> All we need is Jesus. I know some of y'all think you need the lights. All you need is Jesus. All you need is Jesus. Turn your neighbor one more time. Say, All you need is Jesus. All right, y'all, put your, put your shoes on because we're getting ready to go. Luke chapter 9, verse 1 through 5, reading out the NIV. The Bible says this, when Jesus had called the 12 together, he gave them, he gave them, he gave them power and authority to drive out demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them, he gave them and he sent them out to proclaim Elkhorn Baptist Church. Hold on a second, hold on a second. To proclaim how much money you have in the bank. To proclaim who your family members are. To proclaim what church you attend. To proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. That, listen to me, that is your assignment. Y'all hear me? That is your assignment. To proclaim the kingdom and to what? Heal the sick. You say, Brian, that's it. That's it. I don't know, we're going somewhere. And then he told them. He gave them, he sent them, he told them. He gave them, he sent them, he told them. Take nothing for the journey. We're going to get to the, I love this part. No staff, no bag, no bread, no money, no extra shirt. Whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave there, that town. Verse 5, we're going to conclude this. If the people do not welcome you, if the people do not welcome you, Leave their town and shake that dust off your feet as a testimony against them. 
Somebody give God praise real quick, and I'll get in here real quick. Amen, amen. Here we go. That's the word. So let me remind you. Last week I told you he gave them, he sent them, he told them. Y'all write that down. He gave them, he sent them, he told them. It's so important. Y'all listen. It's so important that y'all get this deep down in your spirit. <laughs> he gave us. What did he give us? What did he give? I'm going to make this personal. Because some of y'all are reading the Bible like it's a little prehistoric book sitting on your shelf. And you got to dust it off once a month if that's good. And you read it like he just wrote that for Peter, James, and John. And you act like you ain't up against a devil or a demon or an evil spirit. Listen, we've got evil in this community. We've got sickness in this community. We've got diseases in this community. If we ever needed the time that the Holy Ghost shows up and touches people, it's now. You may not like this type of preaching. I'm telling you, I'm just telling you, listen to me. He gave them, he gave us, he gave you. He gave you power and authority. Everybody say power and authority. To do what? Sit on it? No, to cast out demons. Lord, if a devil were to show up, some of you would tuck your tail and run. That's the truth. You don't even know when evil shows up. You wouldn't know if the devil sitting beside you this morning. I'm preaching good, better than y'all acting. So he said, I gave you power to cast out demons and devils and evil spirits. I gave you power to lay hands upon a sick and to cure all diseases. I have given you power to do this. Well, Brian, that's 2,000 years ago. It's today. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. We fight devils and demons and evil spirits today. We need it. See, churches don't talk about devils and demons and evil spirits. You know why? Because they're under that curse. It's so much easier as a pastor, I'm going to be honest with y'all, it's so much easier as a pastor not to deal with it. <laughs> not to deal with it. Just give y'all a, <laughs> give y'all a, a, a Barney sermon. I love you, you love me, we're a happy family. In fact, <laughs> y'all are crazy like me. <laughs> y'all crazy. Everybody knows Barney. But when you talk about the devil... And you talk about evil spirits. And you talk about all the demon possession. People don't like it. But I stop by today to tell everybody who wants to listen, who wants a word from God, you've got power in the name of Jesus Christ. Ain't no devil. Come on, bigger than my God. Ain't no big bad wolf can ever beat my God. My God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. We need him. We need him. He gave me authority. And if y'all don't want yours, I'll take yours. Let me tell you how, 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 how this is. So Sunday, I preached part one. Told my staff Monday, <laughs> I said, man, the devil did not wait long at all. So Sunday night, everybody say Sunday night. Man, my wife got sick. Um, I'm talking sick. So sick that my baby girl come from downstairs, upstairs, just to see what was going on. And I sat there, and I rubbed her back, and I'm like, you're going to be okay. You're going to be all right, boo-boo, you know, and all this stuff. And the next thing you know, God says, Brun Rafferty, you pray over your wife. And see, most people don't pray until the going gets tough and the tough gets going. But I had a choice at that moment. I could sit there and just say, you know what, she'll be all right in about 30 minutes, an hour, maybe tomorrow morning. Take a nausea pill and go to bed, and hopefully you'll wake up okay. But I sat there, this is the truth. I sat there, and I took authority. I said, I said sickness, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bring authority on you right now. You have to loose your hold in her body. You have to come out of her body. There ain't nothing but goodness, mercy, and health in her body. God, she's your daughter. God, I take over today. Lord, I, and I started praying and praying the Holy Ghost come up in me. And y'all can look at me. I'm telling y'all, you got a different man in front of you now. Because I'm tired of the devil messing with churches. I'm tired of the devil making marriages split. I'm, I take authority over him today. And y'all can say, I'm telling you, some of y'all are in a battle, and you better learn how to fight. 
Mm. So, 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 so. Everybody say 60 seconds. Everybody say 60 seconds. Within 60 seconds, she said, I feel better. She said, Brian, that sickness is gone. I just wish y'all would believe with me. My God, could y'all imagine a 21st century church that is Holy Ghost, Spirit filled, that believes the Word of God? Lord, you come into churches. I'm at a good place today, I think. Lord, you preach this at a lot of churches. They'll have a business meeting. Well, Brian, talking about the devil. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's real. You say, how I know? Because I do counseling. I have half y'all in my office. Whew. Oh, Lord. We don't like, so, so, so the Bible says in Luke 9, 2. And here's what the Lord just spoke into my spirit. You tell them, if they do anything, anything for his kingdom, they're going to need power and authority. Did y'all hear me? It, so here's the deal. If you're not fighting no devils, the devil got you right where he wants you. Here's when the devil's going to rise up when you're doing something for God that disturbs his kingdom. And watch this. It ain't about, it ain't about, it's about his kingdom and not your kingdom. It's about his kingdom and not your kingdom. So listen to this man, 9-2, nine, nine, two, nine, two, Luke 9-2. The Bible says he sent them. He sent his disciples, his followers, me and you. You got to put your name in this chapter. Because most people read the Bible like, ah, I know that was good back then. If it was good back then, it's still good today. Y'all y'all agree or disagree? Is the Bible real or fake or false? A lie. So if it is real and if he can save you, he can sure heal you right now. In Jesus' name. 9 2 says these words, he sent them. We sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And I'm going to commission all of us today to keep doing kingdom work. Y'all got me? Keep doing kingdom business till Jesus Christ comes back. Amen. He gave them, he sent them, and he told them. I want everybody to say that with me. He gave them, he sent them, and he told them. Y'all hear me? So now in the very next verse, Luke 9, 3, he told them, watch this, take nothing. Listen to me. This is so good. Y'all got to get this. Take nothing. No thing. Nothing. No thing. Watch. Take nothing for the journey. No staff, no bag, no bread, no money. Not even, not even, listen to me, not even an extra shirt. I'm going somewhere. Y'all hang with me, please. Take nothing for the journey. So what Jesus spoke into my spirit that I believe you want me to download into me and to you is this what he told me. He says, you need nothing but me. We need nothing, watch, but Jesus. We need nothing but Jesus. We need nothing but Jesus. Well, Brian, we got a budget. We need nothing but Jesus. Well, Brian, we, we got to keep the baptism of fear. Watch this. You don't baptize them in your name. You baptize them in his name. We need nothing but Jesus. I'm, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. God also wanted me to remind, he, and this is, maybe this is more for me than it is you guys. I think we're family. I know we're family, so maybe it's for all of us. See, I personally think we bring extra pressure uh -oh, on ourselves. We complicate everything. Y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. I'm watching y'all. Don't y'all fall asleep on me. <laughs> Brendan's in the house. We complicate, watch, watch me, everything. We complicate church. We complicate the Word of God. We complicate life. We complicate marriage. We complicate singleness. We, we have a Ph.D. I told you I wrote that. We have a Ph.D. in the doctrine of complication. We do. And Jesus made it so easy. Listen, if I can understand it, anybody can understand it. Anybody. Jesus made 
it easy. Matter of fact, he made it so easy. He says, some of you done grown up. He says, you come to me as a child would come to me. See, children believe they can walk on water till you said, no, 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 no. Children believe they, they just take Jesus at his word and say, hey, that's what he said, and that's it. And all of a sudden, we get churchy. All of a sudden, we've been in church for 30, 40, 50 years, and all of a sudden, where's that same old song? Why do we sing it so much? And why does this happen? And why do we complicate everything? We have made church about us and nothing about him. If we don't, I'm preaching, but I, know it's, I told you I put your shoes on. If you don't like Elkhorn, just go to another church. Oh, if you've been offended, just run. Don't deal with it. Whew, my God, I feel a cold wave. Jesus said, he made it so easy. He said, if you mess with my children who believe I can do all things, who believe that I am God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, who is living for me, if you hinder them, it would be best for you to have a millstone tied around your neck and for you to be cast into a lake and drowned. So, y'all, we listen, we better get this right while we're breathing. We better get this right. God says, do not take anything for the journey but me. You know why I wrote this down? You know when churches and people and Christians start getting in trouble? Can I just preach and be on, take my heart out and just be honest with y'all today? This is when pastors, deacons, leaders, congregation, churches, watch this, people in general. I'm talking to you. You know when people and Christians start getting in trouble? Y'all always say, what, 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 be ref? I got five. Y'all just say, talk to me, be ref. All right, now, all right. When, when we think nothing can happen if you're not there. When, when you think church is all about you, I'm, too, I'm going, listen, if y'all, if y'all, put, y'all hit the hater button, your heart's not right right now. Because I'm trying to, I'm trying to tell you, I'm going somewhere. We, we bring extra pressure on everything. Everything. Everything we bring extra pressure. You know, when, when you think Elkhorn Baptist Church can't go or function without you, can I go deeper? <laughs> so I need my prayer group to start praying. When you think that Elkhorn Baptist Church can't function without Brother Brian or the praise team. I knew this was going to be tough, but it's time to grow up. It's time to get off the milk. Some of y'all been in church 30, 40, 50 years, and you're still being offended by the preachers preaching truth. <laughs> church, I, I, I want to make an announcement this morning. I know it's going to mess some of you up. Some of you, you're you good with this. It's not about you. It's not about Brian. It's not about this praise band. It's not about what you think this morning. It's all about Jesus and Jesus and Jesus alone. It's all about Jesus Christ. Listen to me. A lot of people, a lot of people, I wrote this down in my notes. You know why a lot of people don't want anything to do with the church? Because the church brings extra pressure on people. They bring extra pressure on people. Listen to me. We have complicated church. We're to be like a hospital. Hook them up to a Holy Ghost IV. Let God take over their life. Let God deal with the drug addict. Let God deal with the prostitute. Let God deal with anybody he wants to. Have y'all not noticed you can't change your own self? <laughs> oh, you can't change yourself. And you trying to change Billy and Susie and Willie? Not you, Willie. That's all right. It's the truth. Come on, y'all. Y'all making it hard on the preacher this morning. Oh, yeah, it's not about you. It's all about Jesus. It's not about you. It's all about Jesus. It's not about you. It's not about the pastor. Well, I'm just here for Brother Brian. Thank y'all. Thank God bless. Thank y'all. I'm here for the praise and worship. This side is doing really well. They're wrong. <laughs> wrong. Yeah, y'all have fun. Listen, yeah, 
Yeah, listen to me. When I went to church, it's the truth. And there's the, I believe in the reverency of God. I believe there's a time to be hushed and there's a time to be good and there's a time to be loud. But I'm going to tell you something. At my church where I went, if you had to go to the bathroom, you pee on yourself. Because here's the deal. You didn't get up. You said, Brown, we need that back in churches today. No, go to the bathroom. Some of y'all want water pills. Go to the bathroom. <laughs> See, I have fun. I'm not going to let religious spirits damper what God is doing inside of me. I dance. I'm loud. I like to give God praise. I, I like to raise my hands. And you know what? There's a time I'll sit down, and there's a time I'll do this. There's a season and a time for everything. Can we just take a five-second praise break right there? I, let's just do it. Come on. Pray, give God praise. Hallelujah. Come on. Give him praise. I know you don't want to. I know you don't want to this morning, but give him praise. Make your flesh stand up and say, I'm going to praise God today. Woo! Woo! Yes. Why, why does Terry blow at? Because God told him to. Listen, if we're, not, if we're not careful, I've been doing this for 25 years know what I'm talking about. Jesus said, I come to Elkhorn to do signs, wonders, miracles, to heal the sick, to cast out depression, put families back together. Yeah, to heal people, to deliver them and set them free. But I don't want Elkhorn to be like the church of Jerusalem. The church of Jerusalem looked at him and said, no. 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 And so God, Jesus Christ, Jimmy, Jesus Christ, the Bible says in Luke 19, he cried. It broke his heart. Listen to me. It broke his heart because he was coming in to deliver and to bless and to set free. And the church looked at him and says, no. So the Bible says in your, in your Bible, the Bible says that he went over to Galilee. And Logan, in the Bible, the Bible says, watch, y'all read this, it's so good. The Bible is really good. It says he healed every person that he encountered. He healed every person he encountered. He healed every person. You know why? They wanted it. When Jesus showed up, that woman who had the issue of blood, she got on her hands and knees. If, if that happens in churches today, Holly, people don't say, my God. How desperate. How hungry. How thirsty are you, Elkhorn? I'm just telling you, I, I feel a Savior walking through this church. And some of you have been down, you've been busted, you've been disgusted, you've got depression knocking on your door. Enough is enough. I'm just telling you, sometimes you've got to get on your knees and you've got to walk and you've got to crawl till you get into the presence of God. I know what I'm talking about. So, um, whew, hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. So Jesus said, take nothing with you. Take nothing with you. For the journey, take no thing with you. All you need is me. So I started thinking, what if Jesus, he said, Brian, I'm calling you to Africa. And um, I don't want to go, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I'm going to pray, I ain't going to lie to y'all. Lord, send me. Lord, use me. And he's been trying to use you for 50 years. And you've been saying no. So I started, I started thinking, I said, man, what if God were to say, b -Raph, I'm calling you to do something different in your life. I'm calling you out of the boat. See, 11 stayed in the boat because that was comfortable. Boat means dwelling place. There was only one out of the 12 who stood up and said, I'll go. I'll go. So I started thinking, I said, what if God calls me to do something for him? But he says these words. Listen to me. He says these words. Take nothing. Listen to me. Take nothing. Take nothing. I've got to get this in y'all's spirit. 
take nothing with you. And I started thinking, I said, well, Lord, it's going to get cold. It's going to get really cold. I'm going to need a blanket. He says, Brian, you, you don't need no covering but me. But, Lord, my, my hair done had pre-rapture going on. And uh, my head gets really hot. And, uh, and Lord, that sun's going to score. All you need is the S-O-N, not the S-U. I'm over your head. I'm under your feet. I'm all around you. I've got you boxed in, hedged in. You can't get away from me, Brian Rafferty. Take nothing Y'all, see, we read this Bible like I think, God, that was for Peter. I'm talking to every one of you right now. You've got to quit reading the Bible like a prehistoric book or an event that happened 2,000 years ago. What if God says, right now? Uh, God, um, I might need an extra shirt. I told you, Brian, take nothing with you. Um, God, I don't even have no place to lay my head. Don't know Jacob in the Bible? He put his head on a rock. He didn't have a cushion. We are so stinking spoiled. Lord, we, we throw pillows around. We throw things around. And God's sitting there going, I gave you every bit of that. You, listen, we'd be nothing without Jesus Christ. I'm looking at y'all today. What if God says, I'm talking to you. You preach that word. You teach that word. You proclaim. You go over to that side, go to this side. You go over here. You lay hands on them. You cast out the devil. You do this. But God, it's going to be uncomfortable. Yep, I'll be your rock. But God, my shoes. Oh, my shoes. God, they're going to wear out on me. You've not read the story of Moses. For 40 years. Why can't they make shoes like that anymore? <laughs> well, come on, y'all. Yeah, you know why? Because Nike would be out of business. 40 years. 40 years. But God, my shoes can wear. He said, no, 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 no. Wherever your feet go, I've got you. If you need a new pair, see, y'all, we read the Bible like it ain't real. It's real. He says, wherever you go. I got the left, I got the right, I got the shoes, I got the shirt, I got the covering, I got your hand, I got your back, I got everything that you need. All we need is Jesus. I'm going to say it again. All we need is Jesus. All we need is Jesus Christ. All we need is Jesus. Oh, what about this one? To the hygienist. Listen, two, sometimes three times, I got to brush my teeth. So y'all say, thank you for brushing your teeth on Sunday morning. Yeah. I was doing a revival one time. It's so funny. It's my sermon. I can preach how I want to. And I gave an altar call to this little girl. She came up, and I said, honey, you know Jesus. And I was talking to her, huffing, puffing, breathing. And she looked at me. She said, your breath stinks. <laughs> the miracle Colgate. You know what I'm saying? I know y'all ain't got stories like it. Y'all's breath all fresh like a bu bucket of roses. See, I just think different. Y'all know in the Old Testament, they, they used the leaves of the ground for, for a mint for their breath. It's a good Bible study, Dylan. They, reach, they, they get a mint, a leaf, and put the leaf in their mouth. They would chew on it. And that's what gave them fresh breath. They didn't have dentine. I'm just being honest. Listen, I think like this. Leave your toothpaste. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? Then leave your toothbrush. You don't take nothing. Nothing, nothing. See, y'all, well, what about this? Ooh. <laughs> It's funny. Nothing. See, we think 21st century. I'm talking first century. We, we've, 
God literally said, don't you take anything with you. I just wonder in church today how we bring an extra pressure on ourselves because we're bringing extra stuff and we don't need it. We watch. And you say, Brian, I like everything. Listen, honey, that's okay. But I'm telling you, watch. Here, lean in. Y'all with me? I'm with you. I'm almost finished. When it starts becoming pressure, you will break. If you're breaking in ministry, there's too much pressure on your life. It means you've got to look at your spiritual suitcase and say, what in the world do I've got extra in my life that I'm not happy in my marriage? I'm not happy at church. I'm not happy nowhere. You watch. Because you have brought extra pressure on yourself. And God says, all you need. All we need is a child. I know this is so simple. I even told Lord, I said, God, Lord, how much. Everybody, we, we, we got bumper stickers. All you need is Jesus. Isn't that funny, though? He's always using the last that we call on. He is. I just wonder what Elkhorn would look like if she looked in her spiritual suitcase. And you got rid of all the stuff that would bring in pressure on your life. That's a word from the Lord. What would your life look like living free for Jesus? Some of you are worried about your, you say, well, Brian, if I give God praise like I really want to give God praise, what's people going to say about it? You just brought extra pressure on yourself that God didn't give you. Can I go on? Seriously, what if the Lord said that to you? Take nothing. Everybody say, take nothing. Take nothing for the journey. All we need is Jesus Christ. <laughs> all we need. I can hear some of you say, well, Brother Brian, what if they don't accept me? I hear this all the time. Listen to me. You've made everything about you. When they reject you and you're preaching about the kingdom, they didn't reject you. They rejected him. Y'all got me? Say, I got you. So that, that takes the watch. That takes the pressure off of you. Then, Willie, you can knock on doors, and if they receive you, they receive you. If they don't, God bless you. Hallelujah. Up here where I'm at, I used to be in all kinds of pressure. What would you bring me? Brian, why'd you do that? Why'd you preach it? I need to meet with you, Brian. Why are you doing this, Brian? What about this, Brian? You didn't go to the funeral home? You didn't go to the hospital? You didn't do it. Brian, what's it? That's why I ended up in the hospital flat on my back. Looking up straight at the ceiling. Brandon, you was there looking straight up at the ceiling, and I could count the ceiling tiles. And Dr. Montgomery walked in. He said these words to me. He said, Brian, do you love your wife? Yeah, I love Dino. He didn't know her name was Dino, but that's what I call her. He said, you love your church? Yeah, I love Elkhorn. Brian, do you love your children? See, listen. We bring all kinds of extra stuff. And if you're not careful, I promise you, I know what I'm talking about. You end up in the hospital, and you'll have luggage following you all the days of your life and not surely goodness and mercy. You'll constantly, constantly, constantly be looking in and say, what am I going to do about this? What am I going to do about my children? What am I going to do about my church? God, I'm miserable. I'm miserable, God. What am I going to do? And you're constantly reaching to the bag. You're constantly reaching to the bag, and you're trying to satisfy you. And all God says, Travis, give up all you need. Hallelujah. It's Jesus. All we need for our marriages, I'm sorry, this is not a Ph.D. sermon. Some of you have complicated you're constantly reaching into your spiritual suitcase. If I sing a song here, if I don't sing a song there, just sing the song. Well, God, what do they need? Me. Um, but God, I need a deep word. Just tell them about me. Brian, quit complicating me. Quit complicating the gospel. Watch this. I'm going to mess y'all up. God loves everybody. We don't. We don't. We pick and choose who we like. 
We, we pick and choose where we go. We pick and choose everything. And that's why I'm so thankful at the foot of the cross, the ground was level. He loves red and yellow, black and white. He loves prostitutes. He loves drug dealers. He loves Baptists. He loves Pentecostal. He loves us all. Yeah. Woo, I wish I could preach today. Mm. So uh, I'm going to ask you all, praise team, you guys come, to dig into your spiritual suitcase this morning. And I'm going to ask you this morning, what if God says, Courtney, I've got a job. I've got an assignment for you, but don't tell me anything. Now, this is serious. This is some serious stuff. I want you to dig into your spiritual suitcase and see what extra pressure <laughs> you're bringing on yourself. Because, listen, God is, God is love. God is joy. God is peace. God is patience. His name is goodness. He wants us to be holy. And some of y'all are chasing after happiness. So, I'm going to show y'all the rhythm real quick. See, I battle that clock. Because I've got so much hell over the years. I have. I, I, I'm done playing church. Either stuff's real. Or I resigned this morning. It's real, y'all. Look at me, it's real. My aunt died this morning about 1 o'clock. Called her Tuesday. She's at Jewish Hospital where Chris works and she said uh, Brian um, I'm scared see the real you when you lay down and it's about dying time that's the real you y'all can fake and con all you want right now but when you're on your deathbed and that last breath's in your lungs and you're looking up and you're getting ready to make the decision for eternity that's the real you. Brian, why do you get fired up? Because it's real. There's a real hell and there's a real heaven. There's a real devil and there's a real God. And I'm trying to tell churches and people today that God loves you. God really don't need us. He just wants us. Isn't that special? He ain't got to have us. He just said, I choose you. Hallelujah. I just choose you. I, I want a relationship with you. I just don't want you to come to church and warm a seat. I want you to give me praise, honor, and glory. And if you don't do it, the rocks to do it. God's looking for a people to look at their spiritual suitcase and say, man, that's really not me right there. I'm packing stuff that God didn't give me. I'm doing things that God didn't call me to do. So here's the flow. Y'all ready? I couldn't wait to give this to y'all. If you're a note taker, take these notes. Here's how Jesus equips his people. This is so good. Here's how Jesus equips his people. Number one, he said, I do. Look, Jesus showed his disciples. I love this, Holly. Y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. I'm almost done. Jesus didn't say, hey, go catch fish. He said, no, 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 watch follow me hallelujah follow me and I'll make you disciples of men I'll teach you how to fish I'll teach you how to deal with things I'll show you power I'll show you authority God says you can trust me and I'm so sad in my heart because I see people trusting themselves and counselors and everybody else more than they do the voice of Jesus God says, I will show you how to be a disciple. Number two, we do. I love this. I love this. Here's how Jesus flows. I love this. He says, I'll show you, and then we will do it together. This is a disciple. This, how do you make disciples? You show them. Then you go with them. 
feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And number three, you do. I do, we do, you do. I do, we do, you do. I do, we do, you do. Jesus sent them out. Y'all remember by twos? To do it by themselves. Come on, somebody. God, if we've ever, we live in South Central Bible Belt. We've been in church all of our life pretty much. We know the Bible. We know the Scripture. I'm asking you today, when are you going to come? Put that back up there. When are you going to become number three? Where God, I do. Hallelujah. God, I do. At some point in your life, this is where my journey, pray this is where I changed. I quit reading the Bible as a prehistoric book. And I said, God, hallelujah, I know you're real. And God, I'm not going to sit back no more. I receive all power. I, I receive all authority. Satan, I come by to serve you notice today. Hallelujah. you got to lose your hold. No more depression. No more anxiety. I bind it by the authority of God. At some point in your life, you've got to go to number three. I do, we do, you do. I do, we do, you do. <laughs> I know it's in the Bible, Brian. I'm asking, I'm, I'm challenging y'all today. Because I feel this. If South Central is going to change, it's going to take men and women of God saying, Lord, I'll do it. Lord, I, I'll do it. Lord, I'll go knock on doors. God, I'll go to prisons. God, I'll lay hands on the sick. God, I'll pray for them, Lord. God, I'll do it, Jesus. Lord, if they don't want to do it, I'll do it, God. Come on, let's give God praise. You've got to want it. You've got to want this stuff. I do, we do, you do. I do, we do, you do. You do it. You do what God has called you to do, sir. You, re you receive power and authority. You lay hands upon the sick. You cast out demons. You cure diseases. You preach the kingdom of heaven. In my prayer today, y'all listen, I'm done. Is that you will accept this. Which one are you? I do? We do? Or you do? Which one of y'all? You're somewhere right there. I promise you, you're somewhere right there. If you've got to call somebody to go lay hands on the sick and you're not doing it, you're number two. I'm telling y'all what God's speaking to your pastor. This region needs to see Jesus Christ. Not a, watch, not a church. We got 131 churches in Taylor County. How's that working? You know what we're missing, Willie Bland? The vision. He made it so simple. He said, Willie, <laughs> all I've asked you to do is to preach my kingdom and go cure the sick. But Brian, why do y'all think our vision is to be a soul winning, life changing church? So winning, life changing church. So winning, it's all about his kingdom. Life changing, it's all about him healing people. So in Jesus Christ's name, I'm asking y'all all over this house, please stand. I'm not asking y'all to leave. Because listen, here's the deal. Listen to me. It's not time to leave. It's time to be altered. It is time for the church of Jesus Christ to take power and to take authority and take this generation back by force. We're getting ready to take communion here in a little bit. Make sure your heart's right. Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, some of them, some of them fell asleep, some of them died, some of them were sick in their bodies because they took Holy Communion out of order. It's real.
Some of you. Lord, I'll serve you. But God, I got to have this. Wherever y'all go, you got something following you. You can't get away from it. I just wonder how free this youth group would be if you've done a spiritual inventory. God, all I need is you today. I don't need relationships. Because, see, some of y'all are defined by a relationship. It's who you're with. I'm asking this youth group to look in this suitcase. I'm asking you as adults, where y'all at? What's following you? What's following y'all? If you were to really look in this suitcase, what extra stuff, what extra pressure? Some of you think you're fixing your family. Some of you think you're fixing the church. Some of you think, I got it. And God's sitting here going, y'all watch me. At some point in your life, here's what you got to do. I don't need no extra pressure. I don't need man's approval. I don't need a church telling me what I can do and what I can't do. I don't need no doctrine. I don't, I don't need the doctrine of Jesus you need. But some of you are putting doctrine in man, doctrine in theology, churches. And God's saying today, drop what is ever following you. You've got to examine your heart. You've got to dig into the spiritual suitcase. And you've got to expose it. You've got to do Some of you are sleeping. I come out and shake you up today. Hallelujah. Some of you are on a spiritual pillar. Some of you are, I feel the Holy Ghost. Some of you look good. But some of you are spiritually. Don't sing that. Don't you do that. Uh -uh. Yeah. Don't you dare make me uncomfortable. Don't you dare wake me up. I don't want to be awake. I'm good sleeping. I'm done. I double dog dare you to truly surrender today. Truly. Surrender. Truly. Dig deep. Dig deep. I don't want our babies growing up in the church that that may be ninth in the state of Kentucky leading in baptism. I had eight baptisms this morning. Wow. Crazy man. Good stuff, right? But if but if, if we're not careful, even even with eight baptisms, we're doing good. Brian, we're doing good. We're meeting the offering. We're $500,000 to get out of debt. Brian, we're doing good. Don't mess it up. Wake up, old sleeper. Wake up, old sleeper. I, I look at me. Don't nobody leave. I'm talking to you. Wake up, old sleeper. So in Jesus Christ's name, I commission you to take heed to this word. I do, we do, you do. I do, we do, you do. I do, we do, you do. God, I pray in this house that we become a house of worship. That God, we look at our spiritual suitcases, God, and we clean them out today. God, I pray I need nothing for my journey but you. Come on, Holy Ghost. I need nothing for my journey but you. I need nothing at Elkhorn Baptist Church but you. I need nothing in children's ministry but you. I need nothing in youth ministry but you. I need nothing but you, God. I need nothing but you, God. Today, God, I die to myself. I die to what I think's right. I die to that, God. Use me for your glory. So, Father God, in Jesus' name, bless your people. I know you gave me this word. God, you get the glory. 
In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This altar is open. You come. If God's dealing with you, you come. I want y'all to dig today. Dig in that spirit. What extra pressure do you have on your life that God did not give you? Wow. I can't get away from that. I can't get away from that. What extra pressure is on you, your marriage, this house, that God did not put on you? In Jesus' name, praise Him. Let's worship the Lord. In Jesus' name. Y'all come. Come on. I believe God's working. I know God's working. Hallelujah.